All right, good afternoon, Liberty North, AP Psych and dual credit psych students. Mm -hmm. This is Virtual Wednesday, uh, February 24th. This is the second lesson of the day, so it's the afternoon lesson. Um, and again, so we are starting unit nine, uh, which is development today. And we're gonna go through AP learning targets number one through nine. So again, the uh, module has been opened on Canvas. Uh, so you should have access to everything you need, um, including the AP learning targets, which are right here. Okay, so we're gonna actually go through, there's 16 of them. We're gonna go through one through eight today, which is kind of the bulk of the information. So as you can see that there are 16, okay? So these again are listed on Canvas under the development module. Um, there'll also be a paper copy on your desk when you come back to class Thursday and Friday. Um, and then the notes um, are on the thumbnail here. They were sent out in Twitter and they are also on Canvas under the module. Okay, so uh, we're gonna move pretty quickly, but this is a, a good unit. We're gonna be on it for a week and a half. And uh, we get to play some children's games as well and uh, take a blast from the past. So that'll be fun. All right. Okay. So uh, I've got uh, the learning targets in red and then the information in black and green uh, that you kind of need to focus on. And again, I'm going to go down one through one through nine or one through eight, excuse me. We're going to go through one through eight in order. I don't know if I put one through nine on the, I'll have to change it on the thumbnail. Okay. Um, and then 9 through 16 will be next Wednesday, but a lot of that information is kind of repetitive and, and found. So this, this is the core chunk of the unit that you need to know, okay? All right, so AP Learning Target number one says, explain the process of conception and gestation, including factors that influence successful prenatal development, okay? And that's up here, okay? So Learning Target number one, all right? So process of conception and gestation. So uh, what you need to know is that there's three fundamental stages of, of conception and gestation, okay? So there's zygote and, they, and then two weeks embryo and then fetus, right? So those are kind of the three stages uh, and not the only ones. Uh, these are kind of the three general stages of conception and gestation that psychology focuses on and especially when we look in development, okay? Now, what's important to remember is that the nature nurture uh, influences on development start here, okay, during these three stages. So, um, uh, obviously, heredity and genes as the infant is in the womb and developing, but also uh, there are nurture, environmental influences that the mother can bring in to, uh, to influence the development of the child, as well as society and culture, um, you know, things that can actually start to uh, through nurture have an impact on the development of the child. So um, again, in this unit, we'll be talking a lot about the nature nurture. Again, the belief is again, that both nature and nurture impact our development. We know that which one has the, is the bigger player, which one has the bigger impact, you know, I, and I think that's pretty, I mean, the book's emphasis you could tell by reading the chapter is that it's, it's has a high heritability factor. It's that our development is more influenced um, by nature. Um, but the influences that it does list as nurture examples are pretty big players. They're pretty significant and pretty important. So um, we'll talk about it in AP Learning Target number two, but just know that, you know, as that child uh, is developing in the womb um, through the three stages and on, um, that there are big environmental factors that are influencing the development there as well. So, you know, I think you've heard stories uh, or maybe you should ask your parents, you know, some of your parents, some of your parents read to you while you were in the womb. Um, you know, generally when a, an infant is born, it, it knows its mother's voice, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, your mother can tell whether you were active or calm as a baby, your temperament, you know, even started to show itself in the womb, you know, those kind of things, okay? All right, AP Learning Target 2 and some of 6, which I have 6 over here, um, but nature basically is nature, nurture impacts on development. So I just got some listed as you go throughout the chapter of the unit uh, and which we'll be talking about later. But nature, again, biological, uh, which actually we generally refer to as maturation. So development is how we change over a lifespan. Um, and then maturation is the biological change, the, the pre-programmed growth and development that we have. So when we talk maturation, we're generally talking, you know, nature specific things. Um, 
critical periods, uh, we know that development occurs, uh, especially anything that relates to the brain, uh, your body, internal processes actually has critical periods. So in other words, it's like the brain is programmed at certain times of your lifespan to develop certain things. And it really becomes focused on that. And as the brain is wiring itself in development, you know, it's, it's really focused on those things. So language is a great example. We know the critical period for language is it generally birth to seven. And we've talked about that before. So, you know, the brain really focuses on that, um, on the development and setting the foundation for language learning um, as it continues on. You know, motor development is early on, maybe up to the first two years of life. You know, the brain really wants to set a foundation for motor development. So those are all called critical periods. OK, and obviously we have conception and gestation. So, again, just remember that development starts in the womb. OK, and then obviously we have heret heredity um genes um and that side of it as well okay nurture we have culture obviously culture greatly impacts development parenting style which we'll cover over there at ap learning target number seven teratogens which again the book uses specifically which are uh, basically toxins or chemicals that can enter the uh the baby in the womb through the mother or through culture and society so, you know, if, if, if mother uses, uh, uses alcohol, smokes, um, uses drugs, you know, those can still be uh, environmental factors that can influence the baby in the womb, um, you know, where they live, climate, you know, all that kind of stuff. OK, and then, of course, our environment, which is all encompassing. Again, remember, our culture is a part of our environment. OK. All right. AP learning target number three is discuss maturation of motor skills, okay? All right, and number two and six was just exactly that, okay? So maturation, again, is biological pre-programmed growth, okay? So the idea is that we um, develop in biological sequence, okay, that's already pre-programmed. So again, we all might learn to walk at, at different ages. I think the average is nine to 12 months. Um, but we're all going to do it in the same order. OK, we're all going to go through the same stages to develop our motor development. OK, and the ability to walk. So that's it's considered a maturation process. OK, now the way just the general sequence is obviously gross motor, which is the ability to move my big muscles. And that leads to fine motor, which would be, you know, being able to coordinate the larger and the smaller muscles um, for complex movements. Okay. When a baby is born, obviously it's just learning to move its arms and its legs. And I think most of us can have that image of our head of a baby sitting in its baby chair, just kicking and waving its arms and legs, um, you know, and not really having total control over everything and where it's going, but just being able to move them. Okay. And then they begin to, to be able to coordinate those muscle movements for specific and intricate movements. Okay. Now also, um, don't forget about reflexes. Okay. So infants are born with reflexes. So when a baby is born, that's, you know, the nurses will take it over, weigh it, uh, measure it. And then they're also going to check to make sure the reflexes are intact. Um, all the senses are intact. You know, they're going to, you know, that's part of that process, but we're, we come into this world with reflexes. So like grasping is one. So we might think that the grasping is actually fine motor, but you get, and which it could technically is, but you've got to be, you got to be able to distinguish it from a reflex. Okay. All right. OK, and then AP learning target number four. Describe the influence of temperament and other social factors on attachment and socialization. So obviously socialization is big in development. Um, you know, we are social animals. We need to socialize. Uh, we need to create relationships. Um, and again, we, we are less likely to survive if we are isolated and alone. So socialization is a big part of development and it is a maturation process. So we, we view it as being biological because it's a need. Um, and um, it's a huge influence. And even now, as you go in into adolescence, you know, it's big. It's a big part of, of your development process here. OK. Um, and attachment, okay, which is kind of the core of socialization, but we, we, we have a need to attach. So we hopefully are going to attach to our parents. Um, generally, we'll attach to the mother first because she's the primary caregiver. Um, you know, the babies get their, their food and nutrition from the mother. Um, and then, but hopefully they'll attach to the dad as well, attach to siblings, um, you know, then attach to friends, groups, so on and so forth, okay? 
but we know that biologically we will attach to something. So um, if you've seen the stories of imprinting, you know, that's where, you know, a, a baby animal is born and it immediately attaches to whatever it sees. All right. So it has a biological need. So we have that same need for imprinting, um, but we're just not going to, we don't do it in the same way as animals. We're not going to imprint on something that we, we see immediately. Um, generally when the baby is born, it's kind of already imprinted on the mother. It's been in the mother's womb. It's heard the mother's voice. Uh, so that's kind of there already. Okay. But we see stories where, you know, gazelles will imprint on lions and lionesses in the wild. And that never ends up well, but it, at least the uh, gazelle is not alone. Okay. So uh, temperament, again, I think if you talk to your parents, uh, they could kind of tell, you know, we're kind of born with a temperament. Are we kind of cool and relaxed and calm or are we reactive, um, sensitive, you know, that type of thing. Um, we have to develop trust. Okay. Which is one of kind of the first core things that we develop about attachment. Okay. We have to develop a, a self-concept, which is an idea of who we are and our identity. Okay. Um, and then we just have to make sure that we're not alone, you know, that we are imprinted on uh, on our caregivers and our primary caregivers. So, you know, all of these need to happen. Um, you know, I think this one would be the one that would be closer to adolescent development. You guys are kind of still working on identity and self-concept. You know, these are all happen in child development, very, very young. So again, maturation process and printing is supposed to happen very, very early. I think within the first three months of life, uh, your trust happens within the first year of life temperament. You're born with it. Okay. All right. But these are all things that help us develop socialization and to socialize, uh, which again, attachment is a part of that. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll move over here. So number five, I'm going to show a close up here on this because there's quite a few names here. So learning, learning target number five is your kind of historical figures. Okay. So I'm just gonna go down this here while I'm holding it real quick. All right, so some of these you already have in your AP notebook. So number one, Albert Bandura, who did the Bobo doll experiment is the founder of social learning theory. Again, which is where um, it's basically cognitive behavioral. It's where cognitive factors, environmental factors and behavioral factors all kind of have a reciprocal relationship with each other. Uh, Bogotsky is a huge cognitive guy um, in language. All right. So he is basically the one who said that as our language develops, so does our cognitive development. The other big cognitive person is Piaget, okay, which is the who has been voted the second most influential psychologist of all time. Uh, and we'll talk about his theory uh, in just a minute, a little bit more. Erickson, who developed these social psychosocial development stages, which we'll talk about later as well. And then Kohlberg, who did moral development. And Kohlberg was actually a product. Uh, a student collaborator with Piaget. Uh, they shared, shared a lot of the same views on child development. And then we have over here, we have Harry Harlow, which uh, did studies with rhesus monkeys on attachment and basically approved that we actually have a need for attachment if we're going to survive um, and we have to attach. And then you have Freud, Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, which his theory is psychosexual stages of development. Okay. All right. So those are the big seven that you need to know. Now, I think later on on nine and like 13, they asked for other historical figures, but they're all right here. All right. So I'll just kind of list the names again and refer back to them uh, on those. So they will be obviously that's not the reason why those are kind of a little bit shorter when it comes to learning targets. OK. All right. All right. Then we have. Okay, so AP learning target number six is social development. Okay, and that is Erickson's theory. So Erickson uh, developed the theory of eight psychosocial stages of development, which are on page 520 in your book, and also in Canvas. So um, when you go to Canvas, you'll see there's a there's a separate assignment just for Erickson and his theory. So Erickson believed that uh, basically we had eight stages of socialization, if you will. And in each stage, we had a conflict that we had to resolve. And it was a social conflict. Number one is trust. It's basically trust versus mistrust. So basically in each stage, we have a conflict that we have to resolve and we resolve it, whether it's good or bad, and we move on. So, you know, if stage one is trust versus mistrust, you don't stay in stage one until you get trust. You develop trust or mistrust and then you move on to stage two. 
Okay. So um, with Ericsson, you know, our socialization process is generally very, you know, it's generally not perfect. And we generally have these social conflicts that we've got to resolve. And sometimes we don't resolve them very well. And a lot of it has to do with our environment, um, such as if I have a, a very healthy uh, family, uh, I have very nurturing parenting styles, I'm, I'm grow up in an enriched environment, which the book talks about, then I'm, I'm going to probably attach and I'm going to develop trust. You know, if I don't have those things, unfortunately, I'm going to develop mistrust. But either way, I'm moving to stage two. OK. And then um, once I get to stage eight, you know, I'm going to look back on my life and where there's areas in which I've struggled, I'm going to be motivated to go back and fix those. Um, now, most people believe that, you know, as you move on, you know, so you guys will know if you if you struggle with trust and you're going to be motivated to try to fix that um, and kind of compensate for that. Right. So uh, make sure you look on Canvas for that theory there. OK. All right. All right. AP learning chart number seven is parenting style. So this is part of our obviously nurture influences, but there's three basic types of parenting styles. Authoritarian is basically dictatorship. OK, so there are rules. You're expected to obey them, no questions, questions will be tolerated, so on and so forth. We have permissive parenting, which basically is uh, parents who just want to be the child's friend and not actually a, a parent or a parental figure. OK, um, so they're very permissive and passive. And then probably the best choice, according to the book, would be authoritative, not authoritarian, but authoritative in which the parents do take on an active role as being a, a parent an authoritative, authoritative figure, um, but there's also, it's more like a democracy. So there is discussion, there's communication um, about rules and things like that. There's understanding, there's sharing back and forth, so on and so forth. So um, when we look at studies of these three, uh, the, the generally the more, the more authoritative the parenting style is, the more healthy the child develops, okay? All right. And then AP learning target number eight, which is cognitive development. Okay. Um, so basically, let me read number eight here. So Ramey says, explain the maturation of cognitive abilities with Piaget's cognitive development theory. Okay. Um, six was Erickson's social development theory. Okay. So uh, again, this is the big one probably of the entire chapter. So the book allocates more more page, more pages and information to, to Piaget's cognitive developmental theory. So you definitely need to know this. We'll watch some videos on it, but it's kind of kind of the cornerstone of the entire unit. So make sure you know it well. So it's on page 483. It's also on Canvas, but a little bit different. I've got detailed notes with his theory, and then I've also got a video of some of the very famous Piaget tests. So Piaget basically just studied, spent his time studying children and giving them different tests, problems, and then watching them solve it and process it. And what he quickly developed, which was not the viewpoint back in the 1950s, was that children think differently uh, than we do. Um, and hopefully you guys understand that now. You think differently now than you did when you were in elementary school or whether you were in middle school. Once you get to college, you'll think differently than you did in high school. I don't think the same as you guys do. You know, I have a, uh, I'm older obviously and have a developed brain. Um, your guys' brain is still developing. so. Piaget was fascinated with all those uh, differences and intricacies just in how children think and how it's different. And so um, he basically tested and tested children and then came up with four stages that we go through as our mind develops and grows, but also as our thinking uh, develops and grows. OK. OK. All right. So we're going to stop there. So that's a lot of information, but you need to make sure that you have it down. OK. Um, and again, uh, these are on canvas already. Okay. With your notes and information that you need. Okay. So make sure you go to canvas. Um, and if you're going to be gone, okay, what we're going to do is we're basically going to then, uh, spend Thursday and Friday and the beginning of next week to just watch some videos, uh, play some games, do some activities where we're applying this information. So you kind of can see it in, in, in work and in action. We'll watch some videos as well. Um, and then we'll finish up next Wednesday, virtual Wednesday, because we have two in a row in which we'll do learning targets nine to 16. And again, that'll be much faster because this is the core stuff. So make sure you get this down 
and understand it. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, check on Canvas. Um, you can email me. Feel free to jump on the, the, the class Zoom. It's open. It's been open all day. Um, but uh, enjoy your virtual Wednesday, and we will see you in class Thursday or Friday.